What's up guys, this is Tom Kide here. A little bit of a different approach today, talking about a history of some of the original training programs. What did the original training programs look like and who founded them? Where did three sets of 10 come from? People say, well, it came from research, but what kind of research? Thomas DeLorme, back in the 40s, was a medical doctor who was approached by a Sergeant Walter Easley to discuss the army man's knee injury. DeLorme advised Easley to use the maximum amount of weight he could handle for as many reps as possible. Sure enough, Sergeant Easley would perform the leg extensions that resulted in an almost perfect recovery. Easley's rehab spread and DeLorme's reputation grew. Other army men began to apply DeLorme's advice. So it was basically 7 to 10 sets of 10 reps. Lifters would begin with a light enough load and ramp up until their 10 rep max was used. In 1948, DeLorme and Dr. Arthur Watkins, who worked with DeLorme and who had similar views, revealed a change in their thinking. Experience had shown that 7 to 10 sets was in fact too high, and that in most cases a total of 20 to 30 repetitions is far more satisfactory. Fewer repetitions allowed exercise with heavier muscle loads, allowing greater and more rapid muscle hypertrophy. DeLorme and Watkins began to recommend less reps, but with an emphasis on heavier weights. Now importantly, they did this using scientific studies. Studies that are more replicable than the advice of the muscle man at the gym, the bro science. Along with other authors, they produced Progressive Resistance Exercise. This was a medical journal published in 1951 and one of the first large-scale training books of that time. Here was the protocol. Do three sets of 10 reps. For the first set, use 50% of your 10 rep max. For the second, use 75% of your 10 rep max. For the final set, go all out. Use 100% of your 10 rep max. For physiotherapists, this was easy to explain. DeLorme and Watkins had produced replicable evidence that this training system helped to build muscle and rehab patients. It was scientific evidence at its best. It was easy to explain to patients and short enough for patients to follow. Along came Reg Park, who was a bodybuilder. He was a famous actor of the 1950s and 1960s. He's best known for his roles in Hercules movies. He had a great physique. Reg Park's workout routine was based on the principles of strength training. He believed that to build muscle, one must first develop strength. His routines were designed to help lifters gain strength and size. He devised the system, it was actually called the secret of the multi-set system. Of course, with his popularity uh, with Hercules, it drew a lot of attention to this training system. It surely was a great uh, way to supplement his income at the time as well. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger came along later and he was a huge fan of Reg Park and adopted Reg Park's principles the high volume approach. Now, six days a week, two hours a day, training like an animal as we saw in pumping iron, drew attention to the more is better approach. Surely Arnold used this technique to lean out for his contest and I think there was a bit of embellishment here where that sort of volume made Arnold look bigger, better, badder. He was a badass lifting all those weights. It looked so impelling when he was lifting these weights in the movie. Arnold would go on to winning numerous Olympias against very small cohorts of athletes, sometimes only a few athletes competing besides him. In fact, his last Olympia win was probably one of the most highly disputed wins ever. There were a lot of people in the competition and um, while certain people picked him as a winner, apparently a lot of the fans didn't think that was necessarily the case. Um, was he deserving of the title? You can see for yourself. Take a look at old pictures. This spawned generations of champions from Haney to Yates to monsters like Ronnie Coleman and Big Ramy. Was it the higher volume that got them bigger and bigger with each passing decade? Was it better quality food? With Arnold's will to win and all out effort, I don't think Big Ramy is significantly smarter or tougher or had a more advanced training regimen than Arnold or intelligent athletes like Haney and Yates? Was it the availability of various performance enhancing drugs that made for such a dramatic improvement? You can decide for yourself. And is the current state of athletes more appealing 
or healthier than their predecessors, take a look at them with their bubble guts, the water retention, all of the deaths. Which brings us back to Delorme and later Mike Menser and Dorian Yates, who stated that quality is in fact better than quantity, and perhaps this method, high intensity, may in fact be better, more logical, and more efficient. So there you have it, guys, putting it all on the line. I'm glad you're joining me on this journey. Please subscribe, um, write some comments, ask some questions. If you want to give it a try yourself and run parallel to me, uh, more than willing to help you out, give you some encouragement, and let's do this together.